Hello everyone. We are gathering today to discuss diversity with our tarot decks and sexual orientation. And a while back on my YouTube channel, I did discuss diversity in general in our tarot decks. And I um, listed off or showed some of my decks in my collection that I felt were uh, diverse. And so now I wanted to take it a step further and continue our conversation on inclusion and also you know maybe making some suggestions on different decks that we have in our own collections so that people who may be in search of decks that have more inclusion with different sexual orientations they can then add those to their collections should they so choose um so yeah what i will do is start showing you some of the decks that i have in my collection and as i do i'll just give you know just discuss some things that are on my heart with regards to this topic um before i get started a couple of things one before i forget is that um many of these headier discussions i like to have in my rebel soul group over at my website abundantlifetarot.com because i just think that it's nice to have it in a much more intimate way and um these conversations I should say however the other thing I wanted to say is that another reason why is that some of the cars that I have has nudity and so if you are a little you know you don't want to see it then maybe this isn't the video for you but certainly um, watch away if you're not bothered by a little nudity and even if you are bothered by nudity and you don't want to continue to watch that's okay too but if you want to suggest um, some decks that you gravitate to for this purpose that's great and some people don't you know the thing about our lovely world that we're in is you know some people might not really be doing readings for others or they may just be collecting decks and they're not really so concerned about inclusion and that's their bag i think this video though is more for those who are either lovers of tarot readers and they get tarot readings and maybe you know it would be nice they think if they came across a reader who had a deck or two in their arsenal that they pulled up that was more inclusive and this is also for the tarot readers who do readings for a diverse group i know myself i do i live in california so naturally the people that i'm around are is a very diverse population that i'm blessed to be around as many of us are or many of us are not depends also i do distance reading so i am usually talking to people from different walks of life different sexual orientations um different uh cultures careers everything and because I grew up in that environment, that is something that's super important to me. And it's super important that people who come to me for readings feel included. Am I going to always use a certain deck? No, nor do we all expect people to. But it's just, again, just to, to have that awareness, I think is important. Um, just even have it in your collection to go through. Maybe you don't use, there's one deck that I do not use for readings for others, but it is a deck that I consult for myself or I just go through for, you know, embracing inclusion. So let's get on into it, shall we? <laughs> I think, yeah, for me, it's important that people are able to see themselves in a reading and I talked about that in the the first diversity video and I'll say that again it's like you know when people are coming to us for readings and they're coming to us maybe for sexual readings or not sexual like how I'm gonna get well maybe how I'm gonna get more sex but you know what I mean like or issues relationship issues it's nice to be able to have a deck that can kind of like even just do that extra speaking to the situation, so to speak. So I don't know. It's so many different ways you can look at this topic. And I think it's still very important because I think the more we talk about it, the more we normalize it and the more 
people are able to get over their certain biases and start to appreciate and celebrate and be inclusive. And that's the goal. All right, so the first deck is the Delta Enduring deck. My Delta Enduring Tarot deck, here's the back. So I always have to do a little shout out to the Delta. A little aerial view, I love that. And on the cards, I just picked out a few because I have a few decks to go through. So I'm not gonna go through every deck. Fortunately, I've already picked out the cards we're gonna discuss. They have a lover's card here. And one of my lovely um, viewers who was watching the diversity tarot, um, diversity in my tarot decks video, uh, was talking about this topic. And I was like, yeah, you're right. We should be talking about this as well. So I said, let's go ahead and do a video on it. Reduction, which is traditionally the temperance and then the lovers was the lovers and so it's just three cards I picked I mean there were probably other cards in this deck but not many but that was enough for me to be like okay yes I would like that added to my collection because I think that is important to have for my lovers card in one of my decks so that's my Delta Enduring the next one I'm going to discuss has a lot of nudity. And that's my sensual Wicca tarot. It's a Los Carabio. The Delta Enduring is an independent deck. So in my sensual Wicca tarot, and let me preface this by saying that um these, this deck is kind of like, oh, what's the name of it? You know, the racier tarot decks that Los Garabio has. There's other ones, the Mac, Macanera. I can't even think of it. I think I even owned that one at one point. Macanera. I can't even think of it. Anyways, the, um, that's what this is. So, but it gives really good readings. It really does. So that was the Two of Cups. And I usually use this in like um, love readings or like um, when there's like some sexual energy, like um, frustration going on and, and that's why the reading is about. So this is a good deck for that. This is the Two of Wands. Okay. Here is I'm just gonna do this. The Four of Wands. I'm trying to be. I don't know. Hold on. Sorry, guys. So I'm hitting me. Now this is just this is the lovers. Now obviously there's a heterosexual couple, but as you can see throughout the rest of you know some of these cards, there's others. It's just I tried to get the less risque or the, the ones that's not as risque. <laughs> and here is the Five of Cups. It's quite the deck. Um, I love this deck actually though, surprisingly enough. It's it's one of my I don't it's one of my unsung hero decks, I believe, because I don't always talk about it because it is it's a little racy and yeah, but it definitely is a good deck. The next one we're going to talk about is the Stretch Tarot, and I only have one card to show from it. And some of the decks I'm going to show you only has one card I'm going to show, and it just is like, it leaves you wanting more. Like, you like would want to see what else the creator could do, you know, since they kind of opened the door. And here is the Two of Cups in the Stretch Tarot. very, you know, androgynous, and I like that. So that's one card that I'm showing from that deck. 
The next one is the Celtic Tarot by Christopher Hughes, because I know there's other Celtic Tarots out there. Um, this one has a few. We have the Four of Wands. Mm -mm. What is this on my card? Oh my goodness. Sorry guys, I don't know what that is. It's gonna drive me crazy. I'll have to scrape them off. Oh, I never had something like that on my card. I don't even know what it is. Here's the lovers. It's almost like, um, I think that's, yeah, the two of cups is a heterosexual couple. But I love that here's the four of wands. And then I think this is the same couple depicted here. And I love that. I really do, actually. And this is another unsung hero deck that I use quite a bit in the winter time. It's my winter time deck. And I love it. It's a good deck. And I think that it having... Even and here's the beautiful thing about this deck. This is a what I call a period time, you know, like with the Celtic tarot. Um, and what I love about that is that even despite that, they still were able to be inclusive of different of different sexual orientation, despite it being like they could just simply go with a heterosexual couple throughout. They didn't, and I appreciate that with the creators. Okay, moving along. Let's see what else. We have, I'm going to mention Poppy Palin's The Everyday Enchantment Tarot. Now, this deck is just diverse all around. Diverse um, with different abilities. You know, like we, there's some folks in wheelchairs, different um, cultures and races depicted. And there was just one card that could potentially be a different sexual orientation card or not. And that's okay. I like the ambiguity. Um, it's two of cups. They could be really close friends or new, fr new friends who have met. Or they could be, you know, dating or lovers or married, you know. And I like that. I'm trying to get it to focus. So I do appreciate that. Like I mentioned before, here's her strength card. Different abilities, not the same subject matter, but just to kind of demonstrate here, I mean, she really went above and beyond because this is a modern deck and, you know, and I think modern decks have the most opportunity to be as inclusive as possible um, should the deck creator so chooses. Um, the next is one a one carter. <laughs> and that would be my textured tarot, the textured tarot. And there's one card that again could be friends, it could be um, lovers it's the ten of cups and this deck because of this card leaves me wanting more this card was actually the it was one of the top three cards I would say that was like I have to have this deck I just have to have it but this was like if not number one a close like number one or tie with number one or two so okay the next one is my risque deck, and it's the one that I don't generally do readings for for other people. I don't think ever. Maybe once, but I asked if they, I could have their permission to do the reading with this deck, and that is the Cosmic Tribe Tarot. And so, yeah, I had to ask. Is it okay? I really want to use this deck. It's a little racy. I don't know what's going to pop up. <laughs> so, what I love about this deck, 
aside from the wonderful chef ability and the wacky pictures is that it has three lovers cards and I appreciate that because you can then use the lovers card that you wish to use for your reading or I typically use all of my lovers cards so that's just me but not all the time if I was doing readings for others it would be nice to say hey okay um, they probably would appreciate this one or they might appreciate this one or they might appreciate this one choices so I appreciated that again very racy and even those weren't the raciest of the racy. <laughs> so, yeah. But I like this deck a lot. It stays in my collection for now. And we just have a couple of more. The next one is the Hip Chicks Tarot. Now, this is, you know, it's a feminine divine deck. So it's to be expected, right? But I still wanted to show you. I actually really like this deck too. Um, here's the Ten of Feel or Ten of Cups traditionally. And they could be a couple. They could be relatives, you know, like mom and daughter or sisters or cousins or what have you. But it could be lovers. And here's the lover's card. And I get all the good feels from this, you know? And it's like, okay, you know, I am in a heterosexual relationship, but can I appreciate and feel the love in this card? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> and so will our clients. So those are the two I wanted to show from there. And then last, but certainly not least, it is my The Numinous Tarot. Great deck, diverse all around, all around. But it has, it is my most diverse in sexual orientation than probably any of my decks. And it was actually, for me, one of the selling features for me to get this deck. Um, it just was. I don't I don't know. I just instantly wanted to. And I, I can tell I'm really starting to use it quite a bit. Because the gilding is starting to rub just a little. Just a little. But, I mean, I am super appreciative of the fact that this deck doesn't shy away from the non, you know, binary um, orientations. It, it doesn't, it's like, it celebrates the different people, the different orientations. Um, and I love that. And it's a real, this deck is a really, really, really great reader. Um, I have excellent readings, whether I'm doing readings for myself or for others, or I'm doing my astro tarot readings, doesn't matter. I have the best readings from this deck. So, yeah, and I'm still learning myself. I don't know everything there is to know about you know, different sexual orientations, but I'm open to learning and I'm open to, um, first and foremost, having people feel welcome in my presence. That's what I'm open to. So I'm all about learning and I know not everyone is and that that's a bummer, but I know there's many, many people who are like, who feel like I do, who wants just to make sure that others feel safe and secure around us. And so this helps with that, I think. I love that my collection feels inclusive and diverse. That's important to me. It may not be important to everyone else, but it's important to me. And I'm thinking it might be probably important to many of you. So let me know what you all think about this topic. 
uh, chime in in the comments section or reach out to me over um, in my new Facebook group. I just started a Facebook group off of my Abundant Life Tarot uh, Facebook page. So yay! Or comment below in the comments or reach out to me on my website. I'd love to hear from you to keep this conversation going. All right, you all. Much love. Many blessings. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.